Today on Filaments Folly, I'm going to show you how to the easy way to paint and patina a 3D print. Let's get started. Here we have three colors of Metal Effects patina paint. We have the green, the red, and the blue. We're going to use the green on my Bulbasaur today. But I got the rest of these for future Pokemon, so don't forget to sub so you don't miss those files. Inside each box you'll get three products. The first is a colored primer. This one happens to be more of a reddish because we're using copper. I didn't use this primer, but I wished I would have. It'll make the copper paint we use later go down a little bit smoother, and will also affect the reddish color of the paint as well. After that, we have the copper agent itself. This has metal in it, so that way the patina agent will actually oxidize it. You'll put the first coat on and let it dry, and then add a second coat. Before it dries, go ahead and use the patina agent on the model. This will take about 40 minutes to oxidize. If you want an area that's more oxidized, wait till the first coat dries and then add more copper paint and more oxidization air to those areas. Start by applying a thick coat of copper to the primed areas. Again, if you want to use the included primer, this will be a little bit easier to cover. I ended up using two coats to get full coverage on the Bulbasaur. For models like this, you want to make sure you get it into all the small areas of the model itself. Even if you use the included primer, don't be afraid to put two coats on. You want to make sure you get full coverage on your model. Here's a test piece I did on an old print. I always think it's important to go ahead and test new paint techniques before applying them to your brand new printed model. The last thing you want to do is throw away days worth of printing just because you forgot to test a paint technique. Now that I know this works, let's get started on the Bulbasaur himself. When putting on my second coat, I wished I would have put it on a little bit thicker. I think the thicker application would have allowed the oxidization to be a little bit more green. While this coat is still wet, go ahead and use the patina spray on here and let it sit for about 40 minutes. But like I said, if there's areas of the model you wished were more oxidized, you can always use more paint and more oxidization agent in those areas, like I did on the eyes. As you can see here, it oxidized nicely. I put a few more patina passes on certain areas just to make sure it popped nicely. And I'm going back in now with just a straight copper paint to go ahead and give a little bit of pop in those areas of the eyes in some other spots as well. Just as a side note, I only use the copper paint on the bulb of the Bulbasaur. That's why it's so bright in the photos you see at the end of this video. And here he is with the test piece I did as well. I'm super happy with how easy this was to paint and how well it turned out. I'm also super happy you stayed until the end. And since you did, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscription button for me. Now I'd like to work on more Pokemon, but I'm not sure which ones to do. So if you have a suggestion, go ahead and leave it in the comments and I'll see if I can go ahead and make that one next. The files for this Bulbasaur are linked below on Thingiverse. If you download it, don't forget to leave a like. It really helps everybody else catch them all. Thanks for watching and happy printing.